Getting a new diagnosis is hard. So let's talk about it. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dee. I make weekly videos on Thursdays at noon about rheumatology, health, or nursing type topics. Since I'm a nurse who has worked in rheumatology and is also a rheumatology patient myself, this channel will mainly focus on rheumatology, but if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you guys don't miss any videos that I make. So, let's talk about getting a new diagnosis. It is hard. It gives you a lot of different emotions and everyone responds to it a little bit differently. Even now, I still think to myself sometimes, I can't believe that I have this. And I have been through an emotional roller coaster processing it because I was only 23. I'm like, I'm not supposed to have any issues. I'm exercising, I'm eating right. I'm doing this, that, and the other, and nothing that I did could have prevented this. Think about that. Like, there's nothing anybody could have done. That's rough. And even if it is preventable, it's still rough. I realized that I was grieving the loss of my health. I was grieving. I still do grieve today, but it is more tolerable it's easier for me to process and it isn't as frequent not like it was when i first found out and it was interesting because you don't have to lose a loved one to grieve something so that's what i want to talk about today is the stages that i went through that i think is pretty common I think that it's very normal to feel any and every emotion that you feel when you get a new diagnosis. So there was a doctor named Kubler-Ross who came up with stages of loss. And I really uh, took a liking to that model. First stage is shock. Not everyone necessarily feels shock, especially if you've been going through it a while. But I went through that shock and it was, it lasted a good while, okay? And then I would bounce through different stages. So sometimes I skipped from shock, I skipped straight to anger, okay? Then I would skip to bargaining, which I'll get into. Then I would go back to denial and then I would go back to acceptance and then I'd go back to depression again. That's all normal because everyone has to process it at their own pace and their own time. So after shock, the next stage is denial. I still carried around and was still acting like I was perfectly healthy. Even though I knew that I had this diagnosis, I knew, okay, I'm gonna have to see a rheumatologist the rest of my life. But I was still going and working my 12 hour night shifts in the hospital on the busy step down floors like and I would go and be sick as a dog the next day and have to go back into work the next night. But I kept on doing it. I just ignored that I felt sick. I'm like, okay, yeah, I just had a long shift. Back into work, okay. I, I was in denial. On and off. And then when I got reminded by my body, like, hey, you need to do things a little different now, I would get angry. Like, I shouldn't have to go through this. This is a bunch of, I don't want to have to deal with this. I shouldn't have to change my life. All these other people my age are walking around doing all this stuff just fine. I was an emotional mess on and off for a long time. I'm gonna be real. Before the depression phase, I actually accidentally skipped bargaining. For me, bargaining looked like, okay, well, if I go and sleep a little bit more, then I can still work those 12 hour night shifts in the hospital on the busy unit. You know, if I just uh, keep myself busy, 
it'll all go away and everything will be everything and I won't have any more problems. Yeah, yeah. A mixture denial in there. It made no sense. It was absolutely stupid when I think on hindsight, but I felt that way and it was okay for me to feel that way. And I let myself feel that way. Because if I gave myself permission to feel that way, it ain't going to be as heavy later. And it'll go away a lot faster. At least that's what I told myself. So then I get depressed because I'm starting to realize, okay, this is a lifelong thing. I have to do things differently. My body has changed and I have to live my life differently. But then at the same time, that depression also looked like my life is over. What if I can't walk anymore? What if I start gaining weight and looking hideous because I can't exercise the same way I used to? Yeah, that rabbit hole. That, 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 that was not fun. It's not a good place. Okay? It is not. But I had to give myself permission to feel that way. Even if I knew it wasn't, those thoughts weren't rational, I had to allow myself to feel the feeling. Tell myself it is okay. Because the more you fight it and tell yourself it is not okay, the more your mind is going to fight back even harder and then them feelings are going to come back even stronger. And to me, it's just not worth it. The next step is testing. So at this point, I realized, okay, I got to live life different. Okay, new body, let's get to know each other all over again. This is going to be like a nice little hot intimate date because you're getting to know yourself and your new limits. So I'm like, okay, well, uh, let's try day shift. See if that makes a difference. It helped a little bit but then it still was making me sick. Okay, let's try eight hour shifts instead of 12s. And I was still feeling sick as a dog. Okay, well let's try the outpatient setting. Let's work in a clinic. And that made it even better, but then I learned after a while I was still getting sick because the hours that I operate best at didn't match the work hours of my job and we couldn't change those work hours. Say for example, five to two thirty five to three and my work shift was eight to four thirty and then i still have to drive home in rush hour in a city was not fun and honestly many days it was not safe that's what i mean by getting to know your body and listening to it when it tells you you need to take a step back that's not you being an old citizen. That's you respecting yourself and your body. As you find things that are positive, find things that make you feel a little bit better, relieving certain things, and finding ways that you can live your life differently, that's when I started to reach the place of acceptance and hope. I will leave a link to a um, national hotline if you're in the U.S. that you can there's a text line if you need to text someone there's a calling like phone number line and I will also leave a link to better help in the event that you need um, access to speak with a therapist the crisis hotlines and text lines is 24 7 support and it's free so don't worry about being charged for any sort of bill. And then you always could, if you feel like the crisis is really imminent, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. Okay. I am also going to leave a link to um, the website that I got my information as far as the Kubler-Ross uh, Stages of Grief, if you wanted to go and read it. I thought it was a very good resource and I think it explained very nicely how, w what it felt like to get a new diagnosis. You may have to live your life a little bit differently with a chronic condition, but that doesn't mean you have to stop living. So leave a comment of kindness in the comments below because you never know 
who else might be feeling low and read that comment and that little kernel of kindness goes a long way. It does. So, you guys take care and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.